This time on Roadkill, it is mini bikes and the muscle truck, and we race them all. And there aren't any Priuses in this episode. to go, Finnegan completely surprised me with that little Jeep hot rod. And this time it's him who has no idea that I've got these little Honda Trail 70s in the garage waiting for him. Are you ready? Yeah, dude, I'm excited and scared. The big secret is in the garage. That's not a very big garage. No, it's not. But, you know, big enough. I'm utterly clueless. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Those are awesome. <laughs> yep. We're gonna die. What do you think? These are cool. That's yours. That one I borrowed from Joe, who runs the mini bike reunion show. This is a 70, I think. And this is street legal? And that one's a 78. Yeah, they're the smallest bikes I could find that had plates on them. I'm glad we're not riding doubles. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know what could happen. <laughs> Here's the plan. We are going to ride these back to the shop, fix the muscle truck, drive it down to San Diego to Barona to race. It's gonna be too fast for the drag strip on its very first pass. So when we get thrown out, we can go head to head. All right. I mean, I like <laughs> it. I like that a lot. Let's see if they run. Oh, yours fires right up. Now it smells flooded. <laughs> Come on, man, get out of the way. It's in gear. Maybe it's the flip-flops. Maybe the flux capacitor needs recharging. Like down the hill here. This is where Freiburger gets killed in the street. Hey, look at that, he got it running. That's a start, now we can have an episode. <laughs> oh, speed wobbles. He's got a little speed wobble. Oh, here comes an actual motorcycle. My back brake is killer, watch this. <laughs> Uh-oh, furniture truck. Oh, <laughs> look out, dude. Oh, we're so dead. Stop. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this is going to be a race, right? Ooh, I hope I'm in first instead of second. Ready? Come on, baby, go! Oh, man! <laughs> Am I pulling you bad? I feel like I could catch you, but I don't want to die. <laughs> Victory! Ah Making the bed! <laughs> Come on, girl. Go, go, go. I hate to break it to you, but I'm actually closing distance. I am catching you. Oh, man. The arrow was all I needed. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> Death. Hey, are we going to get gas at any time? Oh, yeah. We should probably do that. I'm guessing it's bad to all of a sudden lose power in traffic on one of these. This one look good? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled in trying to do a brake stand in the gas right here, but I'm doing the brake stand. I burn through the gas and it hooks up and does the full wheelie. It was really hard while I'm in the wheelie to concentrate on turning the gas the wrong way. It was fun. I rely on you, you know, to constantly show me what not to do. <laughs> Get a mini bike, don't do that. <laughs> we mobbed 15 miles north to the Hot Rod Garage in El Segundo, California to revive the muscle truck which had been sitting for over two years. That was fun. And we lived. Remember the last time we drove this thing? Yeah. We spent more time on the side of the road than we did in the truck. It was sagged out so bad that the tires started to rub, the pinion angle got bad, the drive shaft crammed itself into the gear vendors. I know the answer to this, but we could at least try to crank it before we put the charger on it. Oh, you're delusional. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah. 
a whole lot of dead. The muscle truck is a 73 Chevy short bed. In around 2006, my buddy Chad and I dropped in that LS6 engine and it has a turbo 400 and a gear vendors overdrive, four nine inch rear end, 513 gears, it's got a spool in it. Should be pretty quick, but we've never really gotten it down the track despite trying a bunch of times. The last time was two years ago and it sat for that long. So everything that we're dealing with here is essentially undoing the neglect. All right, making the list, bad gas. Fuel pump and filter, air shocks, funky wiring, dead battery, nitrous. <coughs> Draining the really old gas out of this, and it smells horrible. It has sat so long that the red anodizing, that's what it should look like. That's what this one looks like now. It's turned pink. That's not even pink, that's bare. And that is sitting in the shade under the truck. It's not like it's exposed to the sun or anything. I am slowed down on the air shocks because the shock pin here is too big of a diameter for the steel sleeve that's in the shock. And that sleeve is vulcanized to the rubber. I say we just cut the mounts off and weld new mounts on. It'll, go, it'll be quicker than going to the parts store and trying to find the right bushings. We have to go to the parts store to get new mounts or even bolts. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, at that point we could try and make a solution to this. Well, and you know what, we need a battery, we need a gas, so we might as well go to the parts store. On the mini bikes. <laughs> we could. You can carry a battery home on your mini bike. <laughs> sure. Right in your lap. Oh, LA rush hour traffic. I know, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I love this bike. Chicks are digging us. You can tell by the way she's averting her eyes. I think she just doesn't want to actually make eye contact. I think that's a dude. Really? With boobs? He needs to work out. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> we both need to swerve. <laughs> okay. You could probably sit on that, huh? Probably. Oh, yeah. Nothing could go wrong with that. Maybe we should, like, Crisscross another one. Oh, you think? <laughs> oh, this is comfortable. Cars! Is it strange that I feel safer now than I did before I had a battery strapped to my back? Like not even close? Nope. Same exact problem. Yeah, I would just try pressing the sleeve out. Hmm. Just help that one out. See, the press is gonna force that sleeve out of the shock pushing and into that deep wall impact socket. Look at that. Almost as if we knew what we were doing. Yeah. That only took far longer than it should have. I threw this truck together a few years ago with literally just stuff I had sitting around, but I haven't driven the truck a whole lot and it's been dead for a couple years, so I'm really looking forward to firing it up again. Okay, first we can check fuel leak. I don't know if it's picked it up yet. Okay, yeah, it's got pressure. Oh, stop, rear float sunk. A lot of gas inside the motor. Like, don't crank it. Can you beat it with a screwdriver? The float's stuck all the way at the bottom and it's trying to fill up the float bowl that comes out there. This is the surefire fix for that. Except when it doesn't work. Give it a shot. Must be fixed. It's got way too much gas in it to crank it over. Okay. Yeah, we need to let it evaporate, go eat, and come back. There you go. got four inch exhaust with bullet mufflers about that big. Pretty good for not running for like two years. You wanna drive it in the morning? Sure. Well, we got the thing running. That's most of the way there. That's roadkill good enough, right?
It's morning. We got the thing running pretty good last night. We have a few more little things to do, but first we're going to go run and do a test drive. And then we're going to run down to Barona Drag Strip in San Diego, which is a little eighth mile deal. Kind of podunk, but very cool. Test drive? Yeah. <laughs> this thing has the best exhaust ever. This is full manual valve body, right? Uh, yeah. That's great. You can't do that in the parking lot. Oh, I forgot. Dude, this thing's badass. <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta fix that. Yeah, it's not happy. It's got a pretty serious wicked bog at part throttle. And it could be the timing, could be the fuel. Oh, um, dude, look how rich the mixture was. They were out four turns. I have all of the stuff we need to tune this at my shop. Which we also need to go to for the computer, right? Yeah. Much better. On the rev limiter. Much better. After a minor tune-up at the stop sign, we packed up our bikes and racing stuff and hit the road to Finnegan's shop in Orange County, which is on the way down to Barona Drag Strip. Allow me to play for you the music of my people. <laughs> that never gets old. Drive shaft vibration, here we come. No side mirror, no real brakes, but it sounds pitched. It. Yes. I think we're okay, dude. Feels pretty good. Even with the gear vendors, this is 26, 2700. It's got 513s in what it. What are we doing? Uh, this is probably 60 miles an hour. Yeah. 513s are good. You always have that passing power. Yeah. engine parts and drag boats and we're gonna move this one out of the way just to make it a little easier to work in here on the way over here it was kind of burbling on the freeway it has 513 gears in it and even with the overdrive it's running at 2600 rpm even at that rpm you can hear it's sort of missing we're just gonna pull it off and have a look from sitting for so long with that bad new ethanol gasoline it literally filled the carburetor with like this green mold. This is the carburetor that was on the Titanic. It's as if you park this thing at the bottom of a lake. Yeah. Look at that. That boat goes in the water. It's never had this much oxidation inside of the carburetors. I'm just blaming modern gas. Gas that you buy today will be dead in six months. Gas that you pull out of a tank of a car that's been sitting there 20 years will usually run. Who's to blame? Obama! <laughs> Stop, shut it off. The corrosion on the little plastic float bowl sight screw completely wiped out the thread, so that just popped out and was leaking everywhere. It's like, this is wonderful. I'm trying to find a carburetor that has the sight screw that we need. But see, all the modern carburetors tend to have a glass sight in them instead, so. No! Well, our sight plug was stripped out. So we're making a new one out of a bolt that's too long, an O-ring, <laughs> two nuts to use as spacers, some silicone to seal the whole deal, and then Freiburger's gonna thread that into the bowl of the carburetor. So that is roadkill engineering right there. Okay, fire up that garbage. Ah, uh, 
It's as if he's bipolar. Nothing he owns has a nice paint job on it, but suddenly he's cleaning the engine compartment of this crappy old truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is, this truck, even though it looks bad in all these different colors, it's really pretty clean. Totally rust-free. The frame was all fresh and powder-coated when I put it together. So, it has potential. It just looks kind of rough. We were really hoping to go drag racing today, but this debacle with the carburetor slowed us down a bunch. The good news is that the drag strip is holding their test in tune both Saturday and Sunday, so we might get down there today, but even if we don't, we're going to get to run tomorrow. made it into town, but it's about half an hour from town to this drag strip. This is Verona Drag Strip, which is a little eight mile on an Indian reservation here, inland of San Diego, California. It's a really rustic track, but the people are cool. There's a huge variety of cars. Today is pretty much just a grudge match, test and tune type day, so we won't be going heads up with anybody. I'm just looking for that 735 ET so that we can get thrown out for having no roll bar, which will then give us an excuse to race the mini bikes. Well, after finishing up some burnouts in the morning, naturally we were like two hours late to the drag strip and we went straight to the tech inspection line. The ground strip from here to somewhere. Oh, good call, yeah. I don't know if I would let it run if I owned the drag strip, but I'm still plenty happy to drive it. I can't believe we made it through tech. <laughs> David's getting rushed to the starting line right now. They just snuck him in ahead of a bunch of other cars. We're running NA right now and on street tires, so no idea how quick this thing will go, but there's no way it's going to run a 735 and get him kicked out. Uh, 8.57 and 82. We're a long ways away from getting kicked out. <laughs> we got a long way to go. I hit the rev limiter. Yeah, we heard it. Either the tack is way wrong or something. I want to. I can move it up. You want to stay on these tires or put the slicks on? Slicks. Okay, so put the slicks on, raise the rev limiter, and go again. Right. All right. Cool. These are Mickey Thompson ET streets. They're actually DOT legal to drive on the street, but decided not to because they're really thin. They puncture pretty easy. And with the spool in the truck, they just make it handle even weirder. The rev limiter for this motor is set at 6,500 because it's got a hydraulic roller cam. You can't wing it too high. But he was saying that the tack only read six grand when it happened. So if the tack's reading low, that's a problem. I'm going to move the rev limiter up just in case a few hundred RPM, give them a little more room. What I'm working with here is the Caltrax bars, which are the ultimate traction device for leaf springs. I am tightening them up so they will actually be functional. This is going to be our second pass. If this goes well enough, then I'm saying next pass is going to be on the bottle. It's a pretty good burnout. All right, come on, truck. ran an 840, it's going to need nitrous if he has any chance of reaching his goal today. There you go. She's clean. It was time to break out the nitrous, but in standard roadkill style, I didn't bring everything that was needed. I'm on the hunt for either a Dash 4 bottle nut, which is smaller than this, or a solenoid inlet fitting, which is larger than this. You have a spare Dash 4 bottle nut? Because I have a Dash 6 with a Dash 4 line. How about a fitting like that that has a Dash 6 on it? Nope. Thanks. <laughs> I knew before I asked. Or a dab of Teflon Aren't sealer. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Hope that works. Awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome. After three days of prepping for this, finally our very first nitrous pass. Hopefully I can put this together because the day is getting short. We might only get one or two runs. <laughs> I think the tires are clean now. Yeah! All right, well that was
was worth two tenths of a second. That was a lot of tire spin. How far? All the way down the track. You got out of the groove a little. Yeah, that was a mess. Last hit, he basically had 100% of the nitrous within one and a half seconds of going full throttle, and the truck was skating all the way down the track because it was just spinning the tires. So we just used the progressive timer to delay it. He's gonna have 100% of the nitrous three seconds after he hits full throttle. Should give him more traction, should go quicker. Moment of truth, this might be the last pass we get. Nitrous is on. There we go. <laughs> Went straight. Yeah! Wow. <laughs> oh my god, we just picked up almost a full second. He's gonna be stoked. 752 at 93 miles an hour! Yeah! Perfect! Bitchin'! You know, people ask, how many episodes can you make with leftover vehicles suck. that Freiburger has sitting around? So what can we possibly do to top it? Drag out more junk from the Freiburger fleet. Yep, it never ends. I needed to run a 750 or a 735 to get thrown out of this place, but it was getting hot and lap after lap, we just could not improve that 753. And we ran out of time to race the mini bikes, at least on that day. We are going to run these things from here to the top of the parking lot and back. Whoa, sneaky. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> That's the up here. <laughs> I almost ate the front end of a Buick or a Monte Carlo or whatever, whatever the hell that was. That's was fun. <laughs> That's the best day of work ever. The best part about going to the auto parts store is all the crazy stuff you're going to see in the parking lot. This is a mid-80s IROC Z Camaro done up in a Twix motif, but that's not the cool part. There's an alligator on the dash. <laughs> Look at it. The cup holder is nice. I made one of the be really one good. of the greatest things you've ever done. Yeah, they hold the uh, big gulp too. Like I know you made a baby and everything, but that cup holder is pretty damn good. Yeah, it's right at the perfect spot for the reach. If you're ever gonna lay claim to creating something in your lifetime, I don't know. If you, I don't know if you go, ah, my son, or the, this cup yeah. holder that's hand fed. I mean, it's yeah. it's kind of nice. Yeah. Edited Hot Rod magazine for 15 years, but cup holder, right? <laughs> <laughs>